behind the scenes with the Stoop Stadium manager Jenny Wynn Stanley. We chat to King of the Turf head groundsman Paul Sykes and director of rugby Conor O'Shea gives us an insight into last weekend's victory over Gloucester. And once again, we put the players to the sword as we test their skill and ability in our weekly player challenge. Now, every weekend, tens of thousands of fans make the pilgrimage to their home grounds to support their teams, but an even larger number, of course, can't make it, so they watch the games on TV, and that requires a huge amount of work behind the scenes. Jenny, great to see you. This is your domain, this is your palace. We can see that there's a lot of kids out on the pitch already. This is a fairly standard day, although this is, this is fairly similar to what would happen on a match day as well. Um, the build-up to a day is always a huge community programme, probably two and a half, three thousand kids involved. But of course the big operation is when the TV cameras come in. Now this weekend you've got the Tigers visiting and it's 3D time. Uh, 3D is interesting, it's the first season we've really done it. Uh, it throws up a huge amount of challenges, uh, both for ourselves and for the broadcasters. Um, the easiest way to explain 3D is it's double the amount of cameras, double the amount of crew double the operation you have for 2D. So everything you would see on a normal match day, double it. Harlequins have been, have been pushing the boundaries a little bit. You have the London doubleheader yep. just across the road at Twickenham and you have the big match. Big, that, game, the big Martin, game, big game, big game. That must throw up a whole new sort of problems for you. You have to prove that what you want to do is achievable and not totally insane. And, you know, we've had an eagle flying a ball in. We've had Jason Leonard in a hovercraft, you know, it's not quite your traditional Saturday three o'clock rugby, but it's good fun. Perhaps the proudest man that any club possesses is the head grounds. And Paul Sykes, you are the chief honcho here at Harlequins. This, this is your paddock. This is this is your baby. If I just say it's grass, do you then sort of inside you think no no it's more than just grass? It's my it's my grasses. Your grasses. <laughs> so tell why grasses? Because I'm an aging hippie basically, and uh, <laughs> I think of them like little people, like just a big massive country or a world out there. Can I have a go? That's enough. You do your job, I'll do mine. They defeated Gloucester, not just defeating them, destroying them. Seven tries, 50 points, and the winning smiles returned to Harlequins. Connor, results like that come along once, twice a season, but it's just what Harlequins needed at just the right stage of the season. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were hit uh, pretty hard over the last six, seven weeks with results, with injuries, with a lot of things. Every team goes through us, and we needed to get momentum back in. Do you still believe you can't get into the top four? Um, I'm not looking past Leicester. Really not, and uh, everything looks after itself and we'll see where we are at the end of the season and uh, you can become guilty at times of looking too far ahead. Will Skinner, George Robson, Chris Robshaw, Will, I have never seen you looking quite so nervous. We will um, electrocute someone, whoever is the slowest then has to answer the question. So ready? It's armed. Here it comes. No. <laughs> it's a long one. Oh, yes! <laughs> well, I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> I am guessing. I'm guessing that you lost that one purely based on your reaction. Other than this, what is the most unpleasant thing that has happened to you in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Something similar. My brothers used to wrap me up in an electric fence and get me when I was going to go again. <laughs> That's not fair. George, this is decidedly unpleasant. Who who in the team has the most unpleasant habits? Uh, I'd probably go for Ollie Cohn. He drops off some pretty vicious smells every now and again. <laughs> Chris, okay, who um, who is the worst person to room with then? Uh, we'll remove Ollie Cohn from there because I imagine <laughs> everything. I'd say I'm probably up there, but <laughs> coming from the man who never has a roommate because he's <laughs> still so loud. I'm captain, I get my room lovely. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you're, you're a snorer. I'm a little bit of a snorer, yeah. It's surprising with a nose that big. <laughs> <laughs> you expect the airways to be a bit big. <laughs> I, I'm clearly useless at this one. I mean, I've done every time. Favourite place to go and play rugby? With the sevens, I've been lucky enough to go to Thailand. Um, that was definitely an eye opener. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't say that. Look at this. <laughs> this slightly dodgy looking rubber glove to try, and nullify, <laughs> to try and nullify the effects of the electric shock. You can't use that. Right, gentlemen, it's been fantastic fun. Hopefully, we haven't electrocuted you too much. Good luck at the weekend. Thanks ever so much for talking to us. Well, that's it for this week as we've given you another unique glimpse behind the scenes of the team and the personnel at one of the Premiership's most colourful clubs. We're into round 19 and you can, of course, follow your club on Aviva's Behind the Badge.